How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Rewrite. So, I I'm gonna be upfront. I'm not feeling the greatest tonight. I hope it won't affect things. I'm gonna try really hard to not let it affect things. It's just been a rough week in general, and as some of you know, I've been dealing with a lot of medical stuff that I'm just hoping to find answers to, but I'm not here to complain. I'm just here to play. So, just giving you a heads up if I seem a little more down or low energy than usual, that's that's because I'm not feeling great, but I feel fi good enough that I'm going to play this. So, let's see what happened last time. Um, I guess the big stuff was like Mr. Asaka, who was the very eccentric old man who screamed at me randomly, which was very not fun. But, you know, eh, whatever. Uh, besides his rampant yelling in my face he seemed fairly interesting he gave us a few leads including apparently some ancient tunnels that go underneath the city Kazabatsuri, uh which is really interesting um but again i kind of got the impression that he was kind of just trying to get shoe us off he even gave us a business card that said i don't want to see you ever again you know like i had, I, I said it before but i want to say it again Asaka. it seems like an older version of us, like the main character, where he like he has this kind of air of like a pretense that he's trying to, to kind of present, but he's also very random and very like like it's like he's toying with you whenever he's talking to you. And so I think like, there's a lot of like kind of similarities there. But uh, yeah, again, like when we saw him at the ramen shop, he kind of shoot us off with his stories about like the fact that they were you know, just kind of a bunch of random guys just fans of video games. And then the second time when we're kind of pushing the issue, he's just like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, again, we're just fans of the like of, of similar like occulty stuff. And in fact, here's something you might find interesting. Now go away. <laughs> you know, like I think he's still trying to shepherd us off, like whatever's going on with him in that group. He just he's he's trying to like subtly keep us out of it, whatever it is. So we'll see what that happens there. But this lead seems like it might be legitimate. So maybe we're going to find something interesting when we go there. Regardless of that, I think that's about all we need to really wrap up for. Let's uh, we'll continue forward. We're preparing for the Harvest Festival and, you know, all that good stuff. So let's see what uh, what we're going to do with this information to see if anything interesting happens. I read over the papers that Mr. Asaka gave me the, that evening. Hmm. An underground ruin. Never knew such a thing existed underneath Kazabatsuri. But they found soda bottles there. Sounds pretty dumb. Dumb enough to be suspicious. If our ORS continues to, uh, trucking on without issues, it might be a good idea to dedicate weekends to more serious investigations. I'll hold on to this lead for now. First, we have to level up on something easier. It'd be nice if those clues kept on coming my way. I want our club activities to feel more meaningful. Besides, it's good good to practice for a part-time job that we haven't done anything with yet. <laughs> October 22nd. I wake up. It's Friday already. According to what I'd hear, I uh, he, he, heard, heard Saturdays are the day uh, off for most schools. I'm so dang jealous. Unfortunately, there's little joy in the word Friday instilled in the hearts of Kazumatsuri students. Anyway, since there are classes today, we can investigate the school. I should I should dedicate some time to collecting rumors. That sucks that I have school six days a week. Students should get the, uh, get the most knowledgeable sources for urban legends and ghost stories. <sighs> oh. We received a few contributions via email again. You've received clue uh, a girl with superpowers has descended. You've received clue wonder number four, Miss Hanako and the toy of the toilet. <laughs> oh, oh boy, that sounds fun. It'd be nice if something worthwhile came out of one of these. You turn around and find the other members loafing around as usual. It doesn't look like the atmosphere is right to propose an investigation. Are we not doing anything today then? In that case, I'll have to. I, I'll have nothing to do. Well, I could loaf around like the others, but... <sighs> Akane suddenly stands up. Huh? Where are you going, Prez? Ah, I see. Oh, okay. I didn't even click the button that makes it do that. What the fitch? Prez leaving, rubbing her eyes. That's what happens when you spend all day playing video games. 
。そうですね。会長、本当にここ住んでるんだよね。あ、um, あ、I don't think she has to. I think she elects to stay here. どうした会長の家はどうなっているんだろう That's an interesting question. そういえば、私もシズルも入ったばかりだから、会長の人となりはよくわからんが。Don't worry. No one knows who she is. I don't worry about that. I spent way more time with her than you, and I don't know either. 何か家に帰りたくない理由でもあるのかないや、ただ単に帰りたくないだけだと思いますけど。Oh yeah, Chihaya, do you actually know? You mean she's just that lazy? 他になさそうですしね。私の知ってる限り、アカネさんはそういう人ですから。Hmm, still, I wonder if there's something going on at home. そういえば知りませんね。なあ、セリスリーそりゃ、はかねさんは昔から知ってますけど、この土地来たの初めてですし。はあ。お呼ばれとかされないのむしろ断られたことならありますね。Okay, so... Our family isn't very social? Well, I wouldn't want you destroying things in my house either. <laughs> しませんってば That said, I can't help but feel extremely suspicious about all this. Prez's home life, I guess. Might be where she keeps all those, trans- all those that transgress to get her pr- imprisoned. Or she could be growing a monster plant garden there. Or maybe it's the dungeon where the Harrison Ford fights as、uh, ancient curses these days. You know, because Harrison Ford never stops, because apparently they're making another Indiana Jones movie. The more I think about it, the more mysterious it seems. Everyone in the room falls into thoughtful silence. Well, except for the one who's eating cake, but nobody's paying attention to her. Oh, Chihaya. Pat's on head. Akane returns. She just seriously called the classroom and school her home? No,、uh, we're talking about your real home where your parents live? Okay, so she literally does stay here. I guess that makes sense. We did find her eating ice cream in the middle of the night. It would be odd if she just went home after that. Seriously? It's autumn already. Just how weak to sunlight is she? Thanks for coming, everyone. I like how everyone's just having fun. It's like the best class. It's essentially. Oh, wow. Yeah. Akane is the first to separate from the group. I see. So that's it for today, then, I guess. We begin walking away in the most natural way possible. But we're going to immediately start following her, aren't we? But as soon as we turn the corner, we glue ourselves to the wall and observe Akane's behavior. We're so nosy. <laughs> We're talking about Prez here. If she catches on, she'll use everything at her disposal to shake us off. She might use invisibility, smokescreen, or summon a bunch of shadow warriors to dispose of us, Secret Service, or cast Petrify, reveal embarrassing details about our past. Yes. <sighs> you seem to be quite into this as well, Suzuru. <sighs> まったく。何をくだらない。私は帰るぞ。はい、バイ、ルシア。いいのか。ああ。ああ。ああ、そう、ルシアとズルは、pretty、they're pretty close。like siblings。な、なぜ私までこんな趣味の悪いことを。you don't、you can leave。クラスレップ、can't refuse to do in the end <laughs>。okay、gotta be careful to follow her without getting noticed。I'm putting all my hopes in you, Shizuru. <laughs> Roger, Shizuru gestures. <laughs> Silently dash to that corner now. <laughs> Chihaya, stop! <laughs> I accidentally stumble on Chihaya's leg as I turn. She falls face first onto the ground. Ah,、oh, crap. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up. You want her to spot us? <laughs> Yell at me quietly. And I apologize. <laughs> 
見つかるよ<笑>なんか人通りが多くなってきたよ。Oh no, it's the post 5 p.m. business rush. By the way, post 5 p.m. rush sounds like a special attack or something. How awesome is that? She's actually, she's like, she likes that. She did agree to the big nod. それより、何とかしないと見失っちゃいますよ。We have no choice. I'll have to use Chihaya's beam to open the path. 出ませんから。だが、Chihaya beam では騒ぎになってしまい、見つかるのでは I like that Lucy even calls it her beam. なんでできること前提で話し進めるんです。あっちだ。She said it gracefully whisks through the crowd. Huh, hi, hi. Follow her. We continue to pursue for about 10 minutes. Just how far is it?、Ah, that's a relief.、Uh. Where'd she go, Shizuru? Shizuru points to the right. Doesn't seem like we'll have to worry about losing her with Shizuru's super sight. ね、oh, knowing us, it will. What do you.、Uh, uh... Black cat crosses the road in front of us. No! Oh my gosh, it's a whole family of black cats crossing the road! Alright, ha ha ha! Miro, I'm a cause of that. What? The leading cars on all the roads are, her are hearses. Jeez, and it looks so green to calm myself. Huh? What a beautiful flower, but. <laughs> Is that a bad omen, too? What's going on here? What? My shoelace snapped in four separate places. Oh, f holy crap! Well, it's been nice knowing you all. About that, the elastic in my sock snapped too. The sock is so loose it feels like it might slip off with every step. What the? A man dressed like a track and field athlete jumps over us using a long pole. What? I've never even heard of that one. Huh? I realize Shizuru is trembling. Uh oh. Ah, I can feel it. The sincerity in your voice. Wait, she screams Shizuru's demeanor. She blurred, blindly dashes after the old man. She's like, I'm not taking that risk. What the? Both of them are way too fast. I lost them already. How did. How did this happen? Shizuru eventually manages to jump over the old man via an impressive acrobatic leap from a fence and finally returns to her senses. I wonder if the other towns have this many weirdos hanging around. I imagine each has to have their own whistling, one whistling man, one rapping man, and one running man. Yeah, here's the thing about this town. Like I've said, every adult we've run into has been certifiably creepy. Like, like what are some of the examples? Like, we found like the weird, like, Guy in the alleyway who like helped us get a camera but also like seems to beat up people. We have like crazy cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs antiques de dealer who likes video games or video games.、Um, we had the creepy lady who was like stalking around for cryptids on the school like grounds and like she was acting really weird. Our parents are very strange. Like, They're like gone, but they hired a childhood friend to come over and grow plants at our house. And Kotari's mom, like when Kotari goes missing, calls us to find her daughter rather than herself. Every adult we've run into has been really weird. Yeah, my sock was half pulled off. It really isn't comfortable to walk in a heel to direct, in direct contact with the shoe. I don't know. I think I've learned the true extent of presence terror, as well as how important elastic is to our daily lives. Yeah, I'm sure I'm not sure if 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 I'm not s
ちょうどあの建物の中に入っていったところだった。Oh, so we're here. Seriously? That's Press's house? Or so we thought. But when we entered, we realized it's an apartment building with an internet cafe on the first floor. Shihaya. Oh. Is our president actually homeless or something? That's possible, but what do we do now? Really into this, Kotori. She's like, we might as well. <laughs> Follow me! Onwards! exclaimed Suzuru's nodding head in its usual imperious fashion. Okay, maybe I'm embellishing that a little. こういうとこ入ったことないんですけど、私もないね。Nor me. なんかみんなで入っていいとこなの ？I mean, I'm, I guess. ねカフェって真っ暗な店内でみんな物音も立てないでひたすら漫画読んだりネットカチカチやってるイメージが。Guess that's true. I've never been to one of these things either, so I have no idea. Like, I mean, there are. Internet cafes are a lot more common in outside the United States. Like,、uh, I, I, I know in、um, Eastern like, nations, it's very common,、uh, but I know it's pretty common in Europe too. And I know that they are, are around in the US, but I think they really went downhill in like, how often they appeared because of just how like, it kind of became a necessity for everyone to have a computer at home. And so like, there was no point in doing internet cafes anymore. Uh, but even then, I've never been to one. Tui de ni, Hanashigoe de Motateo Mononara, Kukyona Otokotachini, you be boki boki nara sare. Boki boki. I think we should be okay if we're not loud then. So, Kono Kanban Yoruto, Kain Torok Shinaito Hirena Yodazo. Fetch. Ah,、uh, they need your ID, then bring mine. Atashimo nai des ne, Kumato ne. Go on, s i n k u r a s a Kona Kotomo Arokato. Okay, Sakuya. Ha, yeah, I, there's just so many questions here. Oh, Sakuya! Where'd you pop out of? Ma, Samatsna Koto desne. Hitomazu, Koregareba, Konkaibun, a Murio de Newton de Kimasno. Alright, so he's either gonna have one for everybody but us, or ours is gonna have a really stupid name. Sasuga Sakuya desne! いいのかこんなものもらってしまってええお気になさらずここの経営者とは顔見知りでして OK He hands the cards to the other four、uh, to the other four as he talks What about me? はい申し訳ありませんが私を含めて五枚分しかないのです Right You scummy B Now I know how、uh, Nataru felt when clutching the blue cat robot with tears in his eyes when he was told it only had space for three. Oh, Chihaya, thank you. What? <sighs> I'm Kotaru. One way or the other, I end up getting a card. Uh huh. Did these two know each other too? Huh, that's nothing. They'll be the, they'll, they'll, it'll be as safe as sailing a dreadnought with me, says、so、Sudu, determined I. Jihai san wa, a mari ko itta tokoro ni daily s u r u k o t o naka t a k a t a desno de. Ko ken nin to stewa. Go ste. I still don't like you, Sakuya. I 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 don't like you, Sakuya. ではまた何かありましたらお申し付けくださいね。We didn't... Whatever. ありがとうです。And my name's Kotaru. じゃあ、突入 !We enter the establishment, leaving Sakuya behind. 
Oh, they got the entire collection of Dragon Gold's new books. I've been wanting to read these, uh, read the interview with uh, Torio Akira for the longest time. That does sound fun. Dang, this place does sound pretty up and up. Copy the first volume of Onwards to the Sun, safely secured. Ha! It was too good! I forgot our original objective the moment we went inside. This isn't good. We have to regroup and continue the target. At least we're out of time. Cesaro is tracing the movements of some dramatic scene playing on her monitor. I'm glad it didn't interrupt anything. Aww. She's it who joins me after her movie ends. Mongu, Mongu. Chihaya is reading Shogun manga and stuffing her face with a rice ball from the vending machine. Countless paper cups are lined up on her table. How much food did she eat? I bet the staff here already hates you. <laughs> Gotta look for class rep now. I thought she'd be the first to come to her senses, but I can't even find her anywhere. I, she must have. Kind of a hard time picturing her liking any of the stuff they have here. Oh, <laughs> she has a soft heart. So you like romance, maybe? <gasps> Seems like she managed to find some tearjerker about animals. Aww. <laughs> no, well, we couldn't find you. あの、いない。What?ビップルームのお客様でしたら、先ほどお帰りになられました。Curses。すまない。私のせいだ。<sighs> no, we were all distracted. いやいや、委員長は悪くないっしょ。We were all equally responsible. おそるべしネットカフェ。yeah, thought we might have to go back because that was fun. Shizuru mutters, clutching a member card in her hand. Huh? You made one for yourself? Yeah. Copy, she does. For now, we'll retreat. That's all we can do at this point. I like this group. Our group's really fun. So long, says Shizuru's waving hand. Yep. Everyone goes their own way. Well, we're going with Kotsuri, right? We live next door to each other. I agree. I'm glad to hear that. Today's activities might have been perfect for an indoor person like Kotsuri. Uh, I hear a voice from behind. Uh... uh... Shh! Oh gosh. <laughs> what do you mean your room? I'm not surprised. I shouldn't be surprised by anything going for her at this point. No, just call it curiosity about someone who's a friend. Uh, no, I wasn't even thinking that. She makes a pistol with her right hand. I'm gonna die. Don't say it out loud, it just makes me feel more real. No, uh, I wasn't planning to turn into you into an article anyway. Actually, she just gave me an idea. Wait, maybe it'd actually be good for you to have an article written about yourself. Huh? Mysterious schoolgirl, you might turn into an internet idol. 
。アイドルにもスキャンダラスな女にも興味はなくてよ。今度やったら、ギリギリ社会生活が遅れる程度の社会的制裁を加えてやるから。I, I, we're already at that point. Like, I don't know if you could do much that worse. What's with that I'm holding back because you're my friend kind of attitude? Are you even worse than others? Are you even worse to others? Oh, lovely. That sounds even more sadistic than simply killing me. Yes, ma'am. Kaito, so nani yanan desko? Yane, honto ni yamete chodai. Okay. It definitely doesn't sound like she's kidding around this time. I'll be more careful from now on. Yoroshi, kibun ga sogareta wa ne. Yahari jitaku ni modoru wa. Weren't you on your way there to begin with? Dakara, jitaku. Right. You're talking about the club room, aren't you? It would probably be unwise to pry further. Well, she's an interesting one, that's for sure. Wonder what that, what's up with that, though. Saturday. Class only lasts until lunch today. Some students and teachers are going to dive right into the Harvest Festival preparations after school. As for me, my quest. If not today, then when? Well, I n o t have had enough time to prepare for everything perfectly, but I can just go with the flow and see what turns up as usual. That's never gotten us in trouble before. I notice I have an unread message from Suzuru. Chi, Luca, Lucia, and I will have discussion today. We will not be able to make it to club. So, Chi, Haya, Lucia, and I. What an interesting group. Did something happen between them? I made a mental note to ask them about it tomorrow if I get the chance. Sunday? I guess Harvest Festival might be starting. As soon as homeroom ends, she hires Lucia and leaves the classroom through different doors. I don't know. Doesn't sound like we'll be able to have club today, though. Yeah. 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 The thought of cut to the starting to become more proactive genuinely makes me happy. Seems like her per,、uh, per chance for rushing home as soon as class ended is being purified little by little. Anyway, how about we get something sweet for a change? Aww. Ah, right. Isn't Spread the Green Committee the busiest organization in our school? So, <laughs> You got into it by chance, but you're working so hard. Kotori san, Jimichi na doryoku daisuki. She does. So na wake de, ja ne. Kotori waves goodbye and leaves. Dang. Let her go and follow her. If we let her go. Who would we even spend time with, really? Just kind of wandering around, maybe? We go and do our investigate. Kind of want to follow her, though. I'm a sucker for Kotori. I decided to follow her. Plus, I'm, I'm more or less part of the committee anyway. Hey, Kotori! <laughs> Don't look so surprised. Kotori jumps as I clap her off shoulder from behind. Sorry about that. Are you going somewhere to eat? You're busy? Can I tag along? That's fine. I just want to stalk you. <laughs> I smile gently. <laughs> I always have my eyes fixed on your butt when I walk behind you. Uh huh. Yeah, right. More like 83. You've already figured out Kotori's these measurements through my own independent <laughs> investigation. That is creepy. Why are we so creepy? Looks like she's been skewing her numbers at as much as five centimeters. Her bust is 83, too, by the way. <laughs> How do you know? What about your bust? 88, 3? Well, she's not wrong about that. 
How voluptuous. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're in a good mood, please let me join your party. So I mean, kinda, but I also desperately bored. <laughs> I see. Okay, if you say so. Kotori places the palm on my chest. It's quite unusual for her to allow body contact. I didn't do anything. It's okay. I'm a kind man. I always try to be, at least with Kotori anyway. Watch her walk away. This is the part that always feels off. Just once. Yeah, just once. Well, maybe this is the second time we're actually counting. I could try prying. Put it into words. I don't know. I don't mean to stalk her. If she seriously disliked it, dislikes it, I can always take a step back. A real permanent step this time. After all, I still have Yoshino. It'd be a bit disappointing, but well then, I take a step forward. They say the first step requires the most courage. But the repercussions of courage can't be underestimated. Bravery doesn't guarantee that you won't get your heart crushed. One could potentially take as many steps as they wanted, but humans aren't that strong. Effort has a limit. But I decide to try and push forward one more time. It terrifies me enough that I'm shaking. This might lead to a big loss, but I'll win. I'll grasp it. I'll make the first step. I won't fool myself into believing it's a beautifully healthy decision. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't feel like it. I'd rather die than hear someone commend me for my efforts after her heart is shattered. It's just selfishness and greed that's pushing me to take this course of action. I crave it from the bottom of my heart. To an extent, I could be mistaken for a stalker if I make one wrong step. All right, time to attack. I follow Kotori. Sorry, I just couldn't leave you on your own. No! <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I dress her from behind as soon as I catch up. Nandi? I couldn't help it. I couldn't control myself. She stares at me for a long moment. Kotori usually has a laid back air about her, but the truth is that she's a tough nut to crack when it comes to these kinds of situations. And I did this knowing that fully. I ready myself. My sentence will be handed to me in just a few seconds. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. The corners of Kotori's lip curls upward as she points to the vending machine. Give me juice. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was in English. Sounds like she wants me to treat her. Got it. I grab something quickly. Juice. I know what she likes. Will bubbling apple poporoka be okay? She begins drinking it on the spot. I can hear the bubbling of carbon carbonic acid in her throat. Yes, please. Kotaro san ya? Ah, I'm sorry. Roger that. What do you want me to do? I straighten my back. Does this mean she's accepted me? I feel like there's still one step worth of distance between us. But it doesn't seem like she's rejected me, at least. That truly really makes me happy. Like weeding. The committee has prepared a wheelbarrow full of all sorts of gardening goods. Scissors, scythes, oil, soil, and so on. You're the only one doing this? Can't sense anyone not around. I'm pretty sure I saw some people talking to her before I caught up. Then I'm surprised you turned me down. Excellent. Leave everything to me. I'm good at physical labor. Do we get paid? <laughs> With good feelings, fluffy, warm fuzzies. We get paid in warm fuzzies. Kotali and I reach the problem area. Ah, this looks pretty bad. Looks like a jungle. I was prepared for it to be bad, but this is a bit... Could have been a flower garden sometime in the past, but this might be over a century ago. 
Countless generations of weeds have lived and died here. The whole thing is like a six tenths garden with four tenths of yellow. It's actually like my garden. I don't know. I don't know if you were, uh, all, who, those of you who are watching this might not have been around. Some of you, I'm sure, were. But uh, I believe last year uh, we were reading a smaller visual novel. Oh gosh, what was it called? <sighs> it, had a conf it had a confusing name. It's uh, it really interesting because it turned out to be a part one. And I'm really curious to see if the like later parts come out because it's very like in depth. But part of it was this recurring kind of like um, winterscape that characters in their dreams would be going through. Like they all kind of shared this dream, but didn't know they were sharing it with each other. But one central part was like a was a lake with a with a beautiful, almost fey like uh, being who was somehow tied to everybody in a very interesting way. But where they found her, there was always this purple flower that would bloom. And it looked a lot like a flower that I had managed to grow in my garden. Because one of the things I picked up recently, like I've gotten into baking and gardening, which is really interesting. But like, as I've been sick, um, I've had to try and find things that can occupy me that are close at hand. And so uh, those are two that I picked up. And um, the flower garden is one, uh, which is kind of why, again, why I can really relate with a lot of the stuff that Kotovi is doing, because um, I grew up with a family that cared a lot about gardening. My mom loved to garden, and so I grew up doing a lot of that. But one, I've always grown like plants, like various vegetables and, f and some basic fruits and berries. I never had grown flowers, like expressly flowers before. So this past three years, I've been trying to cultivate a flower bed in our front yard. And I've had some good success, but kind of like what described here, I was building on a bed of what had been like run around, run, run amok weeds for years before we moved in here. And it wasn't helped by the fact that when the first year we were here, we kind of let it all go because we had a whole bunch of other stuff we were juggling at the time. So I get this. I'm definitely not good at gardening, but there is something really fun about taking and like having to constantly fight back against like weeds, but then seeing something beautiful come from it. One of the funny things about it too is we have um, wild strawberries. We, we, well, not wild strawberries, but like we were out walking one day during the pandemic. Like that was one of the few things we could do is like go on walks outside because we live in a, I wouldn't call it a rural area, but like we're not in a densely populated area. We're in just like a little like suburb kind of thing. So there's room and we were able to get out and stretch our legs without worrying about getting too close to others. And we walked past this one yard one time and somebody had overbought like various stuff for their garden. And they were just kind of like had them out on a little table and they said like, hey, take free for anyone who wants it essentially. And we picked out a tray of like four strawberry plants and I transplanted them into my flower garden because we didn't really have anywhere else to put them. Um, but I had some space and I put them in there. And funnily enough, strawberries have thrived. Um, berries tend to be closer related to weeds than to just like crops, but uh, they've grown and multiplied and we get strawberries from them every year. The, the rabbits tend to get to them before we can, but it's still kind of cool to see and to see that they propagated too. We've had, um, because of the animals eating them and dropping them and burying them, we've had other strawberry plants starting to like grow in amongst the flowers. And they have their own little flowers that are really pretty that add to the to the garden bed itself. And so it's pretty, fairly cool to see that kind of merge together. Anyway, sorry to be rambling about gardening, but this is something that's kind of close to my heart, even if I'm terrible at it. You know, it's something that I do have a connection to in some way. Anyway, I'm not involved in the committee, but we definitely can't show this to outsiders coming from the Harvest Festival. How'd it end up like this? That makes sense. Again, volunteering, like someone could have got sick. Or they just simply could have got bored. Um, 
And if they just don't think about it and don't report it, it could just go on the wayside. ここの元担当の人、ちゃんとやってますって嘘の報告出しつつ、実は放置してた。See, that, that's dumb. Like, if you're gonna be lazy, like, own up to it. こないだ、善意の市民から市役所に苦情が行って、ロケンロール。Good thing they found it in time. 間に合わなかったら大変。これ最悪、塗料で緑にペイントして、ごまかすことになってたかもだよ。<笑> That wouldn't have worked and it would have been bad for the plants. That's not what your greenery committee is about, right? I feel a weight of responsibility behind her words and a little twinge of anger towards a faceless irresponsible fool. Yokai. Got it. I'll show you what I've got. My true cousin of Tsuri heritage. Kotori quickly explains the most effective way of taking care of it. There's some more to it than simply weeding out the undesirable plants. Alongside removing the dirt and roots, we also have to replace patches of soil with some weird extra nutritional mold. Mold? Or like. Okay. It's a bit more exhausting than I expected. After learning the process, I equip a scythe. What about you, Miss Kotori? Kotori moves a little further while I remain behind. I'm surprised by how far the roots of some of these weeds extend into the soil. Oh, yeah, it's impressive.、Um, like, what's really interesting, too, is to think about like trees. Because, like, typically for every, for, for every inch above and a, away from the source of the plant, the root system is usually mirrored that underground. Like, there's factors that involve, like, the, like how dense the ground is. If there's a lot of rocks. Obviously, the, the root system can't get through that very effectively. But assuming general ground with, like, good soil based ground with not a lot of, like, gravel or anything mixed in, you can expect that, like, whatever's above is, like, mirrored essentially below. Some plants do it in a skewed way, like a dandelion is a good example of, of a root system that doesn't spread out so much as it goes down deeply. And that's why it's hard to get rid of them because as you pull it out, you tend to leave a part of that root behind. And if you leave too much of it, it will have enough nutrients built into it where it can just regrow over time. So it can be tough to get those dandelions out, which is why they always come back、uh, if you're not very, very diligent.、Um, a good one to think about too is trees. Trees will go down really deep if they can, but usually trees are so big, their root systems can't go down that far, so they have to compensate. So, you can measure, like, if you want to understand like, the true structure of a tree's network, root like, system, you take the height of the tree and you roughly double it and use that as the diameter of a circle surrounding that tree because its root system will go further out. Just like how the dandelion overcompensates by going further down rather than spreading out, trees have to spread out rather than going down. They still go down, but like it's mostly spreading outward as a way to stabilize it because trees have to contend with wind a lot more than a lot of brushes like dandelions. So, when you think about it, Planting trees in place, I, I hate seeing it when people plant trees like in narrow gaps of like earth between like sidewalk and, and like the, the road or like lining the road. Like it looks pretty, but you're stifling those root systems and you're, you're making it difficult for the roots and the trees to grow healthily. And even if they do, you're also putting a timer on any of the concrete and cement work that you put in there because the tree will eventually like utilize and crack through the cement. It looks really pretty for the first few years, but then over time it starts to get too wild and it tends to either make the concrete look terrible or it makes you cut down a tree that's healthy and should be left alone. I don't know why, but it's always sad to me when you see a tree get cut down. I mean, I understand, like, trees need to be trimmed. But it's always sad to see a tree go down. But what I think is the saddest is when a tree has to go down because it was planted improperly or was uncared for and left to go hog and just fall apart. A lot of fruit trees, if you don't cultivate them properly because we've, we've kind of. Over time, you know how we've domesticated like a lot of animals? We've domesticated a lot of plants as well. 
Like people complain about like genetically modified like organisms, you know, GMO plants. The thing is, GMO plants are us just using an accelerated process of what we've been doing to plants and animals for thousands of years, specifically breeding ones that are more attuned to what we want. We want fruit trees that produce large fruit in large quantities. Apple trees, if you look at a wild apple tree, like a crab apple tree, which is something we typically don't cultivate because the apples aren't really great for making a bunch of food, except in very niche ways. Crab apples tend to, trees tend to be very like long and springy and have like lots of very small fruit. But then you look at something like a, like a red delicious apple tree and those trees tend to be short, widespread, and they tend to be like bowed down with apples. Like almost like if you don't harvest them, the trees will actually bend over and break from the weight of their own fruit. There's that obviously doesn't work in a, just a very pure natural environment. But we, if we're constantly cultivating these fruit trees, we're breeding trees that produced extra fruit. And slowly over time, we bred these trees to become voluptuous with fruit, to overproduce fruit. So like, it's kind of, it's just the way things go. And so trees need care as much as anything else. And they're beautiful. I love trees. And that's why I, I'm talking about all this so much. Man, I'm just going on tangents tonight. I don't know, it's just, it's something I feel. It feels, there's something about it that I feel very strongly about. And I think a part of it is because growing up, I always wanted to have an orchard. Like I always dreamed that. I still want to make that happen someday. In a way, you could say this represented the tenacity of nature, but the elaborate web of roots creeped me out more than anything else. I tried uprooting one without, dig without digging and ended up pulling out a complex network of roots. And these things are on a whole other level in terms of for, uh, uh, fe fe fecundity? I don't know what that word is. I don't think I've ever seen that word before. Fecundity. They're almost like parasitic parasites infesting the soil. Removing a few weeds from the surface won't amount to much. I have to use a hoe to completely eliminate them. Three hours have passed by the time I finish. Culturally, never would have finished on her own. Seems like the time, my time of stalking was impeccable. I think I'm done here. The area has returned to being a vacant lot. That said, empty soil still looked more pleasant to the eye than the half-withered jungle. I don't really understand the details, but I guess we don't have to worry about weeds coming back for a while now. <laughs> you say that you only can like you, you you really can only like be safe for like a week they're coming back they're already there the extra nutrient rich soil contains lime it gives it alkaline properties that increase the concentration of calcium it contains apparently it's that that's very true actually um you want to add different like adding different stuff to pro, uh, to the soils adds different styles of nutrients and based on what you're planting you need different stuff in fact one of the best ways to do this is actually to rotate different types of plants for instance um bean plants like uh, like the vining plants typically that produce like green beans and other uh stuff in the family are actually a natural way of introducing alkaline properties and nutrients in because uh, unlike a lot of plants, they produce alkaline, pro uh, alkaline types of uh, minerals as a byproduct, where other plants tend to need it to have proper nourishment. It's part of the symbiotic cycle of like the, 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 the world. I fill up three trash bags with the roots I've collected. This field is barely the size of a single house, yet it required that much work. I guess greenery cultivation requires quite a bit of effort. Otherwise, you might end up with a whole other type of greenery infesting your garden. The only greenery that's cultivated is the kind that's beneficial to humans. I'm a bit conflicted about that thought. Well, whatever. I don't care. I wonder how Kotori's doing. I go to check up on her. Kazumit City is a green town. Environmental symbiosis experiments are taking place everywhere. That's why when we have trees and flower beds all over the town, the government also awards property owners for, for attractive gardens. That's kind of cool. But that's not true greenery, is it? It's not natural, that's for sure. But there's something that is beautiful about a properly balanced greenery system. Like, over-farming and over-industrialization of crops, I do think, can become more destructive than, like, supportive. But when you do it properly and you really understand the needs of the, of the plants and like helping them cultivate properly. Like I said, fruit bank trees, 
we've bred them to be too overbearing with what they produce. But if we trim them in the spring, you know, like pruning some of the newer branches that the tree's trying to grow, but would actually be too taxing for it in the future because it would be overladen with fruit. And as the fruit develops, keeping an eye on it and pulling the fruit off in the as it ripens, like on a kind of a daily or, or a weekly basis, rather than just letting it all go and do its own thing, not only do we get the benefit of having like all that bounteous fruit and food, but the tree remains healthy because that tree now beca has become like reliant on the way we cultivate it. Now, other animals might be able to fill that role, but even leaving orchards on their own, if you ever go to one, like you'll probably see a lot of fruit falling and rotting on the ground, too much of it really. And so like those trees would not thrive on their own. They would actually struggle. So whilst they've been changed by us, we've also been changed by them because the cultivation of food allowed and was the foundation building blocks of human civilization. Like the very beginning of what built up what we now call society was the ability to produce food rather than having to constantly forage through like the world, just trying to find our next meal that day. So whilst we definitely aren't very great on nature in a lot of ways, there's a lot of it where we become symbiotically supportive. And if we cultivate those types of relationships, we can have a really good relationship with nature. All the nature is supposed to be equally good. Beautiful, attractive, wonderful, nice. That's how I've always imagined it until now. But that isn't true at all. If someone stops taking care of it, we'd end up with an unattractive mess of weeds and who knows what else. Well, then again, like I, there is something really nice about wild country. Uh, that's what natural uh, uh, national forests are really cool to, about. Like it's like the idea of like letting nature just be itself and enjoying what beauty that really brings about. There's a chaos, and it's not really a, a, a it does, and that chaos is not very great for supporting human needs, but it is beautiful, and there is something to treasure about it. In fact, even national parks have been overprotected sometimes we kind of need to let them have forest fires occasionally because we let this underbrush build up too much by constantly fighting and suppressing fires it tends to actually have an adverse effect because the natural order for millions of years has learned how to adapt and live with conditions like lightning strikes causing fires it's like a monster there are freaky plants that grow at crazy speeds hidden away in the least visible areas of town where even light can't penetrate. They rise from a ground, above ground, celebrating a distorted kind of beauty, swelling up like no limit in sight. Ugh. Huh? Insects at this time of year? Oh, is it infested? an illness. Well, I guess there's not normally like that, huh? Likely, these would be an infestation of a fungus or, or animals, like bugs, that might have been brought from other places inadvertently and introduced to a environment where they have no natural, like, predators, and thus they overextend and become dangerous. That can't be normal. Oh, those weeds over there are pretty creepy too. Never imagined it'd have so many roots. You're not growing them with your gardening magic, are you? That's kind of crazy, actually. Even I can tell that isn't normal. Okay. So there is something really unique about the environment and ecology here, natural or otherwise. 
Because to be able to have a plant that can have a effectively an accelerated growth, it would have to have an insane amount of nutrients to be able to just do that. I mean, like it's like human bodies, like we grow and we can grow what we feel quickly, but like we have to have substance material, you know, we have to have like carbon and, and calcium and uh, iron and all these other like really key components to build up the very complex and amazing structures that make up our bodies. Plants are the same way. Uh, they are better at pulling that type of material out in a stationary format, but they still need it. So to have a ground that can support a very rapid growth, plants that can absorb it that quickly and be able to do so without overtaxing the soil and making it harder to grow subsequent generations, there is something very strange going on there. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. That That's something very different. I've heard a lot about evolution, but I don't really know how it works. It occurs in nature. That's about the extent of my knowledge. Right. Yeah, so it is like a contamination. I'll help. We do it together. I can tell the galls are bursting in the bag after we administer pesticide. Holy crap. Thousands of insects rage inside. The bag squirms, letting out loud buzzing noises. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is not normal. Thank goodness the bag isn't see-through. I get goosebumps just from imagining the sight. Still, Kotori continues working unfazed. That was some great A effort, seriously. What can I say? I'm kind of useful when I actually try. I wonder. I ended up questioning the concept of artificial greenery. I had grown to suspect it wasn't re a real thing, that we're just pulling the wool over our eyes. But now I can tell. It's something necessary to mankind. Humans can't handle wilderness in its natural form. Even Kazumatsuri has only traces of it left. There are no insects in the forest. Someone probably pushed them out using chemicals or something similar. I guess it wouldn't be that nice to live in the middle of a forest. It's interesting. We still need it though. It is really disturbing to me. Like, whether there's grounds for it or not, I do feel like when I was younger, when we would go on drives, our car would be covered in bugs. Even if we drove like only an hour, like across like normal highways. Now it feels like I can drive for a whole day on highways or freeways. And I don't even see half of the bugs that I used to see on those little trips when I was a kid. And I've always had a like an itch in my mind wondering like, is that a sign of just how much we've suppressed and overridden the natural order of things even in the past decade? And because if that's true, what are the repercussions of that going to be? Because that feels like a pretty big upset in a very large part of our world. But there's something beautiful about that still. Right. Interesting. When I first talk, saw Kotori and the way she acted, the way she was part of this greenery thing, I kind of thought she was almost like a, like a druid. You know, this idea of like someone who was just in unison with nature in its primal form, essentially, being able to just cultivate things. But that's the thing is like there's a difference. Druids, especially in the now more colloquial, like, like fantasy style of druid, is about tying and being attached to the wild natural world. The idea of like staying away from and separating from the industrialization, even sub industrialization of the modern world. And I thought that Kotsuru is kind of in the same vein, but here we're seeing the side of her. She's more about a cultivated world. She kind of represents that, like what I was talking about, how like there's like 
we've become symbiotic with nature in a way where we rely on it and it relies on us now. That uh, a lot of the way that crops are, for example, do not function properly or very well in a wild nat natural setting anymore. They produce a lot more substance that we need, but they also have become more delicate and don't survive or thrive without some whole, without some help, which is what you know farming is all about. Isn't that what you're always thinking about? Cut to these smiles. <laughs> but I do. I don't have any huge ambitions or anything like that. So, so. Oh, okay, you know, just just the simple things. Big dreams! That's ambitious, okay? <laughs> Why can't you be a cheaper woman? <laughs> uh-huh. I bet you're the only person our age still collecting those. <laughs> if you don't need much, then you don't need 10 million yen a year either. <laughs> That would be nice. What? I like how you're. I, she's implying that, like, our monetary value is the only thing that could get us a pretty wife. For a few moments, I'm speechless. She keeps deliberately throwing me off whenever the conversation goes in this direction. I guess nothing's changed. I wasn't supposed to be like this today. I followed her even after she told me not to. She didn't reject me. I felt like something special was supposed to happen today. Before I know it, I've opened my mouth and begun talking. Hey, Kotori? Nani? Wanna go to the Harvest Festival together this year? <laughs> At least our boy finally said something. <laughs> I received a message from Suzuru that evening. The two had a fight, but it's okay now. Wait, Lucia and Shihaya? She obviously meets Shihaya and Lucia, who had been absent today. I wonder what happened. Those two definitely don't seem very compatible. Wouldn't be surprised to see them arguing at any point. That said, if Shizuru says it's okay, then it probably is. I sent her a good job. Interesting. So I bet you if we hadn't followed her, we would have been involved in that. All right. So our day off Sunday leading into the Harvest Festival, which I guess is probably this week or something. But yeah, so we officially asked Kotori to the Harvest Festival, which I think is very sweet. But I also think that if he's actually on the path of like uh, having a crush on Kotori, he's got a long, heavy road ahead because she seems to have firmly kept him in her mind at the very least in the friend zone or kept herself in the friend zone because she always ends up talking about us getting with somebody else right so it's definitely an interesting problem to be having but i've been there <laughs> i've been there before oh man it's fun i'm excited and I like this path we're going on. I really like Kotori. Every time we talk with her, I have something to think about. She always makes me smile. Just as a character, she's just very enjoyable um, and very interesting. Like, I'm sure all the characters are great, though. All of them have definitely impressed me. But uh, if I've already put myself on the Kotori route, I think I'm okay with that. I wouldn't mind being able to pursue other possibilities and learning more about the other characters just because you know, who knows I might end up liking the other ones more but from what I've seen so far I'm pretty okay with this route so we'll have to see anyway no spoilers but I'm excited to hear what you guys thought about today thank you so much for joining me today thank you especially to the patrons who will make it possible for me to have more content on the channel we've been able to do the these videos a week five videos a week because of their support if you want to be able to support as well please check out the patreon but don't feel like you have to it's just something to do if you feel like you want you're, you're grateful and want to see the content grow and become more substantive and all that stuff but like ultimately i'm gonna make it regardless i love making content 
it's been really fun and been a good outlet for me, especially when things haven't been going so well. So thank you. I really appreciate you being able to be part of this journey with me. But yeah, thank you all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. You're part of one of the coolest communities ever. And I'm a very small part of that. Maybe I'm a bit of a catalyst or like the, the fertilizer. Now I can't sit. I, I feel like I'm calling myself a bag of like oh, crap. <laughs> but put that crap around and we, we, we could see growth of fun, cool, interesting stuff around, you know? So I, whatever, however you want to interpret that. <laughs> I feel like I'm able to facilitate something great. And I'm very happy to be a part of that. So thank you for, for joining me on this journey. So let's keep going. Hopefully you look forward to next week's episode and to other videos that we have between now and then. So until the next video, watch me if you see me next. I'll see you there.